In this video, we're going to describe the halting problem and we're going to provide a proof of its undecidability. This will be our first example proof using the technique of reducing. The halting problem is the problem of determining whether a given program will halt when it's given a specific input. Given a program and an input, will that program, when run on that input, ever stop or will it uh, loop forever? We can express this problem as a language. Remember that we express all problems as languages. And the language we'll call halt tm consists of a description of, of, of pairs of, of things. And the first is a description of a Turing machine. And the second is some potential input to that Turing machine. And a given string is part of the language if m is a Turing machine, w is a string, and when m is run on w, it, the Turing machine m would run and halt. It will halt on input w. Okay, so given a description of a Turing machine and a string, if you run the Turing machine on that string and, it, and that Turing machine would halt, then that pair, mw, is part of the language halt tm. And recognizing elements of that language is undecidable. In other words, given a Turing machine and a string, it's undecidable. We can't determine whether, yes, the Turing machine would halt when applied to that input, or no, whether the Turing machine would loop. We cannot decide that. And our proof, here's the logic of our proof again. Uh, it's a similar, it's the same logic. We assume that this language is decidable. In other words, we assume that there is a Turing machine, and we'll call it R, that can decide this language, halt, tm. Then we're going to use this hypothetically existing Turing machine to build another Turing machine, we'll call that one S, that will decide the acceptance problem for Turing machines. So what we're doing is we're reducing the acceptance problem of Turing machines to the halting problem for Turing machines. They are, after all, quite similar. And so it's a pretty straightforward uh, reduction. But we already know that the acceptance problem for Turing machines is undecidable. So we reach our contradiction, uh, and we therefore can conclude that our assumption was incorrect, and in fact, it's undecidable. The language halt tm is undecidable. I think it's easy to get lost in the details, so I want to go through this a little bit uh, carefully and make sure uh, you understand the different parts of it. So let's look at the acceptance problem for Turing machines first and make sure we remember what that is. It's similar to halt of TM, but it's not quite the same. Again, uh, it's similar in that uh, strings that are in the language consist of a description of a Turing machine and an input to that Turing machine. And those strings are in the language if M will accept when applied to W. Not necessarily just halt, but halt and accept. Okay? So uh, we're going to assume that this language is decidable, but we've already proven that it's not decidable. But if it were decidable, there would be a decider for the acceptance problem for Turing machines. We can call it S. Okay? How does it work? Well, if this hypothetical decider S exists, then it would work this way. But again, note that S doesn't exist. This language is not decidable. But here's what S, the decider for ATM, does. It's given a string. Okay, that string has a, a description of a Turing machine and an input W. And if that machine when run on string w would accept, then the decider s will say yes. That string is part of this language. So it will accept that. So note there's a difference between m accepting w and s accepting this pair here. Okay. On the other hand, if m when run on w would reject w 
or would loop infinitely, then our decider will detect that, so to speak, and will reject. It will not loop. S is a decider to decide this language, acceptance of Turing machines. And since it's a decider, it does not loop. Deciders never loop. OK, now let's look at R, which is a Turing machine that decides our halt language. OK, so halt is similar. OK, M is a Turing machine and W is a string. OK, but an MW pair is a member of this language if M would not only would, would halt on W, either accept or reject, but it would halt. Okay? So we're just asking not whether it would halt and accept, but whether it would halt at all. Okay? So a decider for this language, if one exists, would work this way. So we can call this hypothetical decider R. Okay? To decide halt, again, it's provided with an MW pair. Okay? And it asks, this, this decider R asks, would M either accept or reject W? If M either accepts or rejects W, then R says, yep, that pair is part of the language halt. And so R will accept to indicate that that pair is part of the halt TM language. On the other hand, if M, when applied to W, okay, would loop, then that pair is not a member of HALT TM. So if M would loop on W, then R, the decider for HALT, will say no, that MW pair is not a member of this language, and R will reject to indicate that no, that MW pair is not a member of the language. So remember the logic of our proof. We're trying to prove that the decider for HALT doesn't exist. And we're going to do it by proof by contradiction. We're going to assume that the decider for halt does exist. We're going to assume that R does exist. And then we're going to construct an algorithm to decide the acceptance problem for Turing machines. Okay? So the proof basically consists of constructing S, assuming that you've already got R. Okay? So we're going to construct S, a decider for the acceptance problem for Turing machines. We know that can't exist, so uh, if we're able to construct it, assuming that R ex exists, then we've reached a, a contradiction. So our assumption that R exists will then be found to be incorrect. So here is our algorithm for S. Okay, S is a decider for the acceptance problem of Turing machines. Does M accept W? So the input to the algorithm is a pair M and W. So we've got R. We're assuming that R exists, our decider for halt. So the first thing we do is we use it as a subroutine. We run R on our input, MW, to see if M halts or to see if it loops. If it halts, R will say accept. And if it uh, loops, then um, R will say reject. Okay, so if it loops and R says reject, uh, then we know that M doesn't accept because it loops, it doesn't accept. So we can reject, which is what our decider for S is supposed to do. On the other hand, if R says, well, gee, if you run M on W, it will halt, then it would indicate that by R would accept the MW pair. And if R accepts, it means that M would halt on input W. And R itself is a decider, so we, we don't have to worry about running R. R will itself never loop. Okay, so we found out that M will halt for sure when run on W, because R told us that. So now it's safe to go ahead and run M on W. So we can simulate, as part of our algorithm S, we can simulate S, uh, M on input W. We know that it will halt because R told us that. And then when M halts, it will either accept or reject. And if M accepted W, then it's a member of the language, so we can accept. And if M rejects, then we reject. 
So we've built a decider for the acceptance problem of Turing machines. But we know that the acceptance problem for Turing machines is undecidable, so we've reached our contradiction. And that completes our proof that the halting problem is also undecidable.